All right, welcome back to Morning Live. And right down studio, I'm joined by Mr. Kor Jagero, who is a renowned poet and, of course, a writer. Every poet and uh, spoken art um, word artist we call on set must mention this guy. So today we've got him, Kor himself, on set. Karibu, Bwana Kor. Thank you very and much. Good to see you again after uh, around seven years. Seven or so. Seven or so. Yes. Yes, now... Um, Talking about the youth coming on set, especially Switch TV, mm. and mentioning your name that you inspired them in one way or another, it simply boils down to the fact that you're a destiny shaper. So let's start there. Before, of course, we know you're a renowned author and poet. Let's start by telling us about the youth. How do you deal with them? Uh, the youth are very interesting people. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so... I think the only, the only reason why I'm probably known with, uh, by so many artists or, we, or poets in Nairobi is that we, we had an event that was, we were running sometimes back at All Saints Cathedral Church mm. called mm. Poetry Sport. Okay. So that was, a, that was a platform that was given to every artist to mm. express themselves. Okay. And those artists that I remember so vividly were Rick's Poet, uh, mm. there is Mufasa, there okay. is Teardrops. Absolute Teardrops. Uh, yeah. Yes, and, uh, and, 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 and all these other guys that are yeah. now in, you know, Ngatia Bryan, I think, was also uh -huh. there at some uh -huh. point. Uh -huh. uh, so, so that is, that is, that is I think, I think the, 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 the why, if, if, if these guys are to remember you, then you have to give them a platform to do sure. what they love. Sure. Yeah, because you remember we, what we used to do is that you, we, you, you would send us your, 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 your poem okay. in advance to look at it, mm -hmm. you know. And, and sometimes you would have to look to sit down with the poet and say that I, we think we can bet, you can bet this, uh, this, this, this work this way before it goes on stage. Okay. And so that one-on-one -on -one and intimate relationship is what I think has uh, stayed with those artists up to now. Mm -hmm. And that is why probably they remember Poetry Sport and they remember uh, myself as the founder of, of, of the Interesting, yes. interesting. Mm -hmm. So the foundation of our interview now, how did you start? Who inspired you to go now the author thing, or the author way, and of course uh, uh, the poetry way? I'm very sure there's someone who actually touched you and uh, just inspired you in that direction. I, funnily enough, I was touched by, by, a, by a language that's very difficult, Swahili. Mm -hmm. Uh, growing up, I grew up in the village. I went to school in the village. Most of my school life was in the village. Mm -hmm. uh, my, my <laughs> so you went to learn Swahili? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, by the way, I used to write very good Swahili and I couldn't speak it. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes. I, I, I passed flying colors. You couldn't speak Swahili? Swahili. Yeah. My, my tongue was a bit heavy, too heavy <laughs> to speak Swahili, but I would write it very, very well. Interesting. You know. So my, um, my uncle had a, a library. My two uncles had libraries. Wow. Yeah, and mm -hmm. one was having a, a collection of Shaban Roberts, mm -hmm. his 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 poetry, his Mashahiri. Okay. Yeah. So so I really I really I really I I read so much of the works of Shaban Roberts, mm -hmm. and then uh, there is um, there is another Rubadiri. Okay. Yeah, there mm -hmm. is my other uncle also, Mr. Ubundu, also mm -hmm. had uh, this this poetry collection by Rubadiri. Mm -hmm. Yusuf, uh, somebody cook and Rubadiri. Okay. You know, and and then when I went to school to high school, there was my our literature. Actually, Guy, the letter Badiri. Yes. The letter Badiri. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Our literature uh, teacher was very, very good. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think he was teaching something he deeply loved. Okay. And so I really, really got, got, got into loving literature okay. and writing literature. Uh, and I was, I was very much close to high school. So every other day we would, we would you know, we'd talk about the works of these guys and sure. talk about and, re and write. Now, there is uh, what got me into, into writing a lot is that I wrote a love letter some sort of a love letter that I was not planning to give to any girl. Wow. Yes, and it was stolen by one of the guys. <laughs> and it was taken to our neighboring girl school. And then that's A hair of girls. Uh -huh. You know? And yeah. I later got the, 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 the word that my, my letter was stolen and taken to, to rye girls. Uh -huh. And that the lady was smitten. <laughs> so you, you so kind of I, did, I, that did, is did that the 60% of the work. Yes, yes, uh -huh. yes, without pay. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. And then okay. that's how I realized that I'm a very good writer. Mm -hmm. And I need to write and I need mm -hmm. to do poetry. Okay. Then, of course, uh, after that, uh, my father wanted me to go, uh, to, go to a teaching uh, school. Okay. I said, no, uh, mm -hmm. I, I like teaching, but I don't want to, to be a career teacher. To be a teacher. I, want mm -hmm. to, I want to do a lot of writing. I want to do journalism and things like that. Okay. So I traveled to Nairobi and, and studied journalism and, uh, and writing. Okay. 
Interesting. Yes. Now, when it comes to your uh, publishing and just your, yes. your journey in writing, yeah. because you you have your your copies out here and a good job you've been doing. Now, what really inspired you to now uh, stick to the niche you are in right now? Do you do l real life stories? Do you do non-fictional fiction? What inspires you to now sit down and think? I want to write about this. Life, 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 life is life. Life inspires me a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, I came to this city very. Uh, my father had just died uh, two years before. Sorry about that. And then, uh, five months into my college, my mother died. Mm -hmm. So I remained an orphan in Nairobi, and life in Nairobi was really interesting. Extremely mm -hmm. interesting, and mm -hmm. I watched a lot of things, mm -hmm. you know, happening in this city. Uh, remember, I went to school with people who had a lot of money. Okay, yes. you know, mm -hmm. you know. I I remember every every other day we would go to the sixth floor of the building where we were, mm -hmm. and this 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 people would just order chips and chicken. Mm -hmm. huh? And you, I. <laughs> <laughs> <He's laughing. laughs> I, could, I couldn't afford Zafa. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Sorry about that. You know, it is interesting. Yes. And then that's very interesting. And when you look back and, and, and tell the story of a boy who cannot afford 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 supper mm -hmm. and can't afford uh, lunch yeah, sure. and is living with kids who are very, very rich or having very rich parents, mm -hmm. you know. So, so, so these are very heavy stories that I, I really wanted to capture. Real and, life and, situations. Yes, yeah. and, and, and write about. I mean, taking me as a, as a fictional character and taking me as a non-fiction character, yeah. there's no difference. And so I really loved writing these stories, sure. writing stories about people doing this. Mm -hmm. And then, and then again, our our, mm -hmm. our Kenyan situation. It's it's a very it's a very interesting place to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, looking at politicians and how they behave, mm -hmm. and looking at businessmen and how they get rich, mm -hmm. and look at how people are poor and Absolutely. walking from Kibera to industrial area yeah. and back to make money for people. It's true. I mean, I mean, life has a lot of things to write about. It's true. And, and so even when I am in a matatu or in my car and mm. doing all these things, there's a lot of stories. Right? And that inspires me a lot. It's true. And I travel. Mm -hmm. And traveling also inspires me to write uh, stories. You know, mm -hmm. so that is that is really what what inspires me. Okay. Life really inspires, okay. inspires now, me. Now, the generally. ghost of 1894. Yes, yes, it was uh, of course inclined into what happened in Rwanda. Yeah, and uh, the ghost of 1894, the title itself was kind of now very different from what the content was itself. Yeah. Now, what inspired you to give the con the, the actually the title, the book, the title, of course, the, the content itself. Sure. Yeah. So, so what happened in Rwanda happened in 1994, mm -hmm. and so I went to Rwanda and researched the book for almost nine months okay. in Rwanda. I realized that the story, the, what culminated in 1994, started actually a hundred years before okay. in Germany. Okay. And that is why the book, instead of 1994, mm -hmm. it is 1894. Wow, okay. Because, because the story was started by the Germans. Mm -hmm. Remember, if you have time, I can tell you a bit in, in 30 seconds that... Sure. Yeah, that... Uh, during the World War II, I don't know whether mm -hmm. it was the World War I or World War II, one mm -hmm. of the World Wars, mm -hmm. uh, Germany was going to attack France. Mm -hmm. And uh, Belgium was sandwiched between, between, between France and, uh, and, and Germany. Okay. And so the Germans told the, to, told the Belgium that, look, we want to cross over into, into France through your territory. But, sure. the France, but the Belgians said, no, we are, a, we, are a, we are a neutral country, you can't. And the Germans told them that we will pass through Belgium. And if you refuse, then we will, we will, we will be running through, uh, we will be stepping over your children and your women and burning your villages mm -hmm. if you refuse. And that's exactly what they did. Remember, when they were doing this, there was the huge presence of the Belgian Congo. Sure. The Belgians sure. were in Congo. Absolutely. So when the Belgians realized that those guys are messing the, with, up with them in, 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 uh, in Europe, they decided to mess with them in Rwanda. And then they kicked the Germans out of Rwanda. Yes. And how, that is how the, 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 the Rwanda was colonized by the, Bel, by, by the, by the Belgians. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then started, you know, uh, saying that the Hutus and the Tutsis are this way, and sure. liking their women and, yeah. and giving everything to the Tutsi and, you know, you know just, 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 just uh, you know, hitting their heads together. Okay. And that's what happened. So the, the, the genocide of 1994 has roots all the way in Europe. Okay, interesting. Yeah, interesting. so that is why mm. it, I, I travel 100 years before the genocide to establish what actually happened, okay. what, what brought the, okay. the, the, the genocide in 1994. Your best piece so far? 
My best book. Um, I don't know my best book. My books tell different stories, uh, and I love those stories. Mm -hmm. uh, Ghost of 1894 tells a story of somebody who is running away from the war. Mm -hmm. uh, then uh, True Citizen tells a story of a police, uh, uh, tells the story of, uh, of, of a conductor or a makanga who falls in love with the wife of a traffic police officer. Wow. Yeah. Can you, know. you just tell us about the synopsis? <laughs> <laughs> Give us the synopsis. So, so, so this, this is... The synopsis. This, this guy was once a violent robber. Uh, <laughs> he was once a violent robber, my, my, my main character. And then he decided there is so much blood in, in, in killing people. Okay. So he decides that let me now start being a matato driver. Okay. You know? And then uh, he doesn't realize that, that this is another world. Another very dirty world. Sure. Yeah, the, 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 the life of, you know. And then becoming a matatu driver, he falls in love with a woman that turns out to be the wife of, uh, of, of Nairobi police commandant. <laughs> you know, and the story just unravels. So I love that story. <laughs> so my other book is called uh, <laughs> Why the Hospital Corridor is White. Mm -hmm. It follows the story of a lady who is diagnosed with the... Uh, with, uh, with, uh, with 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 cancer, mm -hmm. but it still goes back to the hospitals to okay. Okay. To, to, to 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 help those that are also suffering from cancer. Mm -hmm. And then the other story is that when she was in medical school, her mm -hmm. mother used to tell her that there is a problem with the line, the female line in mm -hmm. our family, okay. sort of a curse. Okay. And uh, these people are dying of cancer. These people are dying of, uh, of of AIDS, and these people are dying of strange diseases. And she was okay. like, "I know what kills people okay. because I'm in med school." Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now, now that she's 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 suffering from cancer, mm -hmm. she remembers what the mother tells her. It's true that. And goes back to her village to find out if these true stories are true. Okay. That is that is the why the hospital corridor okay. is true. So, something else is um, uh, it's a process before you publish something yes, out yes, here. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, verification. Yes. You know, no publish will just come to you and yes, of course yes, just yes, take yes. your piece and of yes, course yes, just yes, now yes. helps you. Yes. You are a self-publisher, and yes, uh, it, yes. it's it's something very very nice of you because yes. now what made you a self-publisher? Because yes, red tips, red tips, the yeah, 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 yeah. The the the, the thing is that uh, what what I think happens with the it takes a lot of time, and um, Kenya Kenyan Kenyan publishing in Kenyan Kenyan publishing industry is difficult because Kenyan publishing industry they mostly do textbooks for schools. Okay. And that is where the money lies, uh -huh. you know. And uh -huh. you really can't blame them for yeah. that because yeah. they are in the business of making mm. money. Mm. Uh, there is, there is, there is this thing that Kenyan don't read so much, and so fiction books suffer. Mm. I was even getting there. If you want <laughs> to hide anything from a Kenyan, you hide it in a book. In the which, books. Which so how, how are you demystifying these things? No, I, 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 I think that uh, I, maybe the Kenyans don't find their stories very interesting. Mm -hmm. You have to be. In <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean. To be very honest, mm -hmm. uh, the people out there do a lot of work yeah. to put out a book sure. that, are, that sure. is final. Look at Dan Brown. Dan Brown would research his book and travel all over the world for mm. for, for for two years yeah. to, to research his book. Okay. So probably the Kenyans are not getting very very, very a good deal mm -hmm. because if you're going to get to to to, to read a page that is uh, a mm -hmm. book. That is two. That is one hundred and seventy pages, okay. and the person is selling for a thousand five hundred. It's true. And Dan Brown is selling for for one thousand, maybe three hundred. And that. you look at the book, and it's very nice. It's true that. Mm. Thank you so much, Ko, for coming to Studio Today. And of course, we 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 have so much to talk about. No problem. I'll invite you soon again, so you talk about all these things. And of course, soon with a poet now. Yes. How yes, actually yes, you yes, touch yes. them, and of course, you change their lives. And thank you so much for making time. All right, man. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. That's all we had for you right now on Morning Live. Joyce Omond is coming up next with Full Circle. My name is Nick Mudimba. Our sign language operator has been Evelyn Wangui. Stay tuned to Switch TV. Somebody has been interpreting. <laughs> <laughs>